This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and now look at capital taxes. We've looked at income taxes as a direct tax. We're now going to look at capital taxes, which is whereby a company will pay tax based upon a gain on the sale of an asset or an investment. Okay. So it's not just looking at disposing of an item of property, plant and equipment or, or something along those lines there. Uh, it's looking at the gain is a taxable profit on the disposal of an investment or an asset. Okay. Uh, so most assets are chargeable assets. When we talk about chargeable assets, that means that we are going to pay a capital gain or a capital gains tax. Uh, there are some exemptions that exist. Uh, again, learn them. I wouldn't worry about them uh, too much. Uh, private motor cars, uh, qualifying corporate bonds, uh, shuttles uh, bought and sold for less than $6,000. Uh, and wasting shuttles okay so if it has a life of less than 50 years uh, that's a horse okay uh, other ones things are also exempt from capital gains tax essentially because essentially it is a gift uh, so we've gifted it to somebody it's not as if then the, the government will deem uh, some form of deem proceeds to work out the gain uh, it is a gift that you have given uh, of land and buildings and works of art to a charity or if you've gifted assets to government institutions and museums uh, there will be no gain calculated upon it okay uh yeah need i say more uh what you've got there however it is focusing upon the capital tax computation okay this is key isn't it this is how you go through there and work out the capital gain, which is then used to work out the tax that you pay. Okay, so it's very similar to what you have with regards to a profit or loss on disposal, but we need to look at it from a tax perspective. So you take the proceeds, so the amount of cash that you have received, uh, you deduct the cost of the asset, but just be careful that cost of the asset is a historic cost, isn't it? So it looks at what we paid for it several years ago. Uh, what we can do there, we can adjust that cost up to its current cost. Uh, so to look at what it would cost you today compared to what you have sold it for today. Uh, and that's referred to as a process of indexation. Uh, all that will happen within the exam at this level is that you'll be given a percentage as to which the current cost has increased by. OK, uh, what you've got there is as well, uh, you can then further reduce your gain by allowable costs. Uh, so were there any initial purchase costs that, that you incurred? So maybe legal fees, uh, etc. That, that had to go through and be paid uh, improvements and enhancements. So maybe you, you put an extension onto your building. Uh, so that extension will be deductible. Just note. No repairs are allowed. Okay, uh, that's just an expense through profit or loss, and, and would hit your, if you like, income tax computation, uh, not your capital tax computation, and any costs incurred to, to sell the assets. Okay, uh, that's it. You just need to go through again, learn those, and apply them within the question. So what we've got there, uh, if we can find the question just at the bottom of the page that I have there your capital tax computation okay uh, question says here calculate the taxable gain so using that formula there and the tax payable and again it talks about being resident in country x so the tax payable is going to be based upon a rate is it of 25 percent of the taxable gain okay so what have we got uh, a company resident in country X purchased land and buildings in January X5 for 155,000, of which 55 was attributable to the land. OK, it's telling us the land amounts. Uh, we will see maybe reasons why afterwards. Uh, the company incurred in the same month 55,000 for the refurbishment of the building, which was classified as capital expenditure according to local tax regulators. 
So that 55,000, if you like, is an improvement, is an enhancement, isn't it? So that will be an allowable cost to deduct. Uh, the land and buildings were sold for 425,000. So that is your proceeds, isn't it? A hundred of this was attributable to the land. Uh, so again, we'll worry about the land aspect in a moment. But it says the company paid 8,000 in disposal costs, which were allowable for tax purposes. So they are costs incurred in selling the asset, maybe advertising, I don't know, marketing, uh, you know, any fees that there could be, uh, auctioneer fees maybe, I don't know. Uh, but they are allowable, so they will be a deduction from the game. And what it says is it says local tax regulations allow for indexation of the purchase and refurbishment costs of the building, not the land. OK, so that's why it's given us the the costs separately, hasn't it? It told us what the, the land would be. You know, land was 55, wasn't it? So of that 155,000. Well, 100,000 is for the buildings, isn't it? And that's going to be indexed likewise as well with the 55,000 that you paid for the refurbishment of the building. Okay. And that's increased by 35%. Uh, capital gains are taxed at the corporate income tax rates applicable in country X. Okay. Uh, so, so what have we got there in terms of the computation? Well, let's go through there first of all and work out the capital gain. Uh, the capital gain takes the proceeds, which was 425,000, wasn't it? Uh, from that, we go through there, don't we, and deduct uh, the cost of, of the purchase. Well, what you've got there is that there was 55,000, wasn't there? For the land, wasn't there? Uh, just be careful, because next what we have is it's, first of all, you've got the 100,000 was there for the buildings. But you've also got as well the 55,000 for the improvements. And they are indexed, is it, by the 1.35? Okay, uh, because it increased in value by is it 35%. And then what you've got then is to deduct, is it the 8,000? which are the disposal costs, okay? Uh, if you tap that all into your calculator, I think you get, is it 152750, isn't it? Uh, so what you've got then, again, at 25%, I think that gives you, is it 381? eight eight dollars okay there we go key bits again it was the land that had no indexation wasn't it uh the buildings and the improvements did and they were indexed by the 135 and the disposal costs of eight thousand were an allowable expense okay uh that's it uh, it's not going to get much more challenging than that within the actual exam. Okay, so again, said it several times, practice the questions, see how you get on. And if you get stuck, we're here. But that isn't too bad, is it? But now I'm going to go through and complete the capital tax section by looking at two small parts related to capital tax. First of all, we're going to have to look at the concept of rollover relief. Now, I don't think there's going to be any calculations examinable based upon what is written within the syllabus it just talks about the concept of rollover relief however we do need to then think about how we can utilize capital losses and um, we have seen 
examples were by it is asters to show how we use the capital loss from a computational perspective. So maybe the capital loss would be a little bit more of a challenge. Uh, rollover or relief as a concept, quite straightforward to go through, I think, and understand is what happens there is you've disposed of an asset and you have made a capital gain. OK, all rollover relief does is it gives you a relief. So a deduction if you roll over that gain. OK, so it's quite literal. OK, however, there are specific scenarios that have to arise for you to be able to roll over that gain and claim relief. To put it in a more, if you like, easier to understand fashion, rollover relief is where capital gains are deferred. OK, and the way in which you defer that capital gain is because what happens there is that you take the cash from the sale of the asset to buy a replacement one. So you haven't just sold the old asset to get cash uh, and to go off and pay a dividend. You've gone through there and sold that asset and you've taken the cash from the sale of the asset and reinvested it. And the reason why you're then allowed to claim the relief on that reinvestment is because if you've used the proceeds to buy a new asset, then how are you going to go through and pay the tax? OK, uh, so you can claim rollover relief. OK, uh, how does it go through and work? Well, what you do is you take the gain on the sale uh, and you roll it against the base cost of the replacement asset. So whatever you pay for that new asset. Yeah, you have that to go in your future capital gains tax computation when you sell that new asset in the future. But you can deduct uh, that gain uh, within the cost. So if you paid 150000 for a new asset and you made a gain of 20, then the, the base cost, if you like, the net cost against that base cost would be, would it be 130? So we paid 150 for the new asset. Uh, we had a gain of 20. That gain of 20 can be deducted against the cost uh, to work out the cost that then feeds into your future capital gains tax computation. Again, by reducing the cost, that does then mean that there will be a larger gain in the future. Therefore, there will be more tax payable within the future, but hopefully the tax rates will have gone down Okay, at some point in the future. Uh, but at least it goes through there and defers the original gain, doesn't it? It means that you pay the tax at a later date. Okay, So it's important just to have an idea of the concept and what rollover relief actually is. Okay, You make a gain, that gain is rolled over and used to defer that tax payment. And that gain is used against the cost of the replacement asset. OK, you deduct that gain from the cost of the replacement asset in your future capital gains tax computation. OK, uh, you then have your capital losses. So we've gone through there and thought about trading losses previously. Uh, capital losses, again, calculate things in exactly the same way. However, instead of getting a gain, what you end up there it is with a loss. OK. The rules with capital losses will be given to you specifically within the question. Key bit is that they are never carried back or offset against other income. OK, uh, so you can only go through and carry them forward and you can only go through and carry them forward against future capital profits. OK, there we go. Uh, excellent. Uh, that, that's it. So let's just look at it from a conceptual fashion and then move it into a, a computation fashion. So what you've got there is if you look at the example capital losses, uh, it wants us to work out JKL's income tax due for each of the years, December X7 through to December X9. So is that three years worth of tax computations? Uh, it says country X has the following tax regulations. Uh, profits are subject to tax at 25%. Uh, capital gains are added to profits from trading to give taxable profits. So I add the two together to work out the taxable profits. Uh, trading losses can be carried forward indefinitely, but cannot be carried back to previous years. Uh, and capital gains or losses cannot be offset against trading gains, losses or vice versa. So if you have a trading loss, you can't relieve it against the capital gain. If you have a capital loss, you can't relieve it 
uh, against a trading loss, okay, uh, and vice versa. Uh, so what have we got? Well, if we go through there and look at each of the years, X7, 8 and 9 and X7, uh, you've got a trading loss, is it there, of 300. So that trading loss is going to be carried forward, isn't it? For the future accounting period so there will be an x7 there will be a nil trading profit uh, you've got a capital profit is it there of 400 uh, so you will add those two together won't we so that is nil uh, your overall if you like trading profit it is nil isn't it because we made a loss capital profit is 400 so when you add them together your total Is 400 isn't it uh, at 25 percent your tax is at a quarter that's 100 isn't it okay uh, the 300 can only be carried forward on your profits it can't be offset against that capital gain uh, so in 20x8 do you have left is it 250 because you've utilized that 300 loss from the previous year that gives me 250 because there's no capital gain. 25% uh, of that, I think, is 62.5. Okay. Uh, in terms of your then, is it X9? 700, there's no trading losses to relieve against it. The capital loss cannot be relieved against the trading profit. So this figure there now would be nil and that would be carried forward so my total profits are 700 25 percent of that i think works out is it as 175 okay there we go okay uh, and again what you can do there is that 150 will be carried forward as a capital loss which can be relieved against future capital profits okay It's all right, isn't it? Okay, nothing too difficult there. The rules would have to be given to you within the question. Okay, you follow the rules, apply them, and then hopefully you will get the answer. Okay, uh, there we go. That, that finishes off the chapter. Uh, if you get stuck, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask us on the forum. Other than that, I'll see you in the next chapter when we look at international tax issues and how tax is regulated.